Greetings today from the Source NY in Poughkeepsie, New York. I am Dr. Stacy Lamar, bringing the message to the collective on this Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. The message today is using the all pink bottle. There's a few all pink bottles up on the wall, different shades of pink. Uh, the one I'm choosing today is bottle number 81. Bottle number 81, it's a pale pink uh, bottle. And it's called Unconditional Love. So I'm going to reach around the back and grab that. Uh, this is my mirror. Oh, it's right behind me. Bottle 81, pink on top of pink, unconditional love. This is the name of the bottle. Uh, the tarot cards are, there's 78 cards in the deck. So bottle 81 does not directly connect to a tarot. However, in the Kabbalah Tree of Life, it's the return journey of the Empress. And in the Major Arcana, um, the Empress is bottle number three, or card number three, excuse me, tarot card number three. So uh, this is the return journey of the Empress, if you were working with this under the Kabbalah, which is a whole different subject not to confuse you. Let's talk about unconditional love and why I chose this bottle. Pale pink um, speaks to self-acceptance, self-nurturing, and self-love. And unconditional love speaks for itself, okay? I really do believe in my couple decades, almost three decades of healthcare, and working within the wellness center and the spiritual work that we do, that we do not, as a society, uh, the human species, we do not love ourselves enough. We are not giving ourselves or honoring, honoring ourselves and giving ourselves the appreciation and love that we deserve. That is going to be debated by anybody around that hears this message that has, has lived with or been involved with a narcissist. So take them out of the conversation and let's just talk about generally as a rule the importance of self-love and self-acceptance and loving without condition of yourself. We are human. We are here to make mistakes. We are here to learn and we are here to grow and develop. And if we are beating ourselves up, if we are knocking ourselves every time we make a mistake, then we are spending more time in self-doubt than we are honoring ourselves for the lessons that we need to learn and for the lessons that we are learning, okay? We are not able to, in my opinion, have healthy relationships with others um, if we are not able to bring love to ourselves without condition. And that is part of the lifelong process of learning how to find the balance and the harmony in loving ourselves and loving others without condition. Um, when we change roles in life, as we grow and develop and change from being a child into becoming a parent or becoming a spouse or a partner, and some people don't have children, I understand that, but using the example of being a parent, there's something about that parent relationship that birthing and having responsibility for another soul that brings out a sense of unconditional love um, for most most parents, not all parents, most parents, okay? Being able to love and accept and recognize that this soul is, is vulnerable and, and requires nurturing. Think about that soul as your own soul. Forget about the need to care for others and put yourself in that spot as that, that soul that requires nurturing and that soul that requires unconditional love and make yourself priority and consider how important that is. And if you can do that, if you can start loving yourself, think about will I be able to be a stronger nurturer in the other roles in my life? Now, there are many, many variations in unhealthy relationships, and this, this video is not gonna tap into all of those or address all of those. But I want you to think for a moment are you loving yourself enough or are you relying on love from other sources in order to make you whole? I'm guilty of that. 
I understand and I get that message. And that was a hard pill for me to swallow when I really had to do my own personal journey work and accept and understand that in my own world, I was too self-reliant on the nurturing or the love from others as a means to satisfy and make myself whole. I still struggle with that. That's just my reality. That's part of my struggle and my journey work in human form. Many of us struggle with that. And many of us choose to or prefer to put blinders on and act like that's just really not important. And unfortunately, I really believe that's not true. It is more important than a lot of people want to believe. Unconditional love and self self-acceptance, putting yourself as priority does not mean that you are neglecting the other people around you. It's quite the contrary. If you are strong within your own world, if your heart feels strong, you feel love for yourself, you are more able to and more empowered to give love to others. If you did not have in your childhood the um, nurturing and the love without condition and that foundation of feeling safe, in childhood and you're growing up and you're developing with a whole bunch of baggage, me included. So there's a lot of personal message about me that comes forth when I think of unconditional love and in my family where things were lacking, but this message is not about me. This message translates to the group. Anybody that's hearing this message, I do believe this message is attuned and meant for you. There are no coincidences. I do not believe that this message is not going to align with you in some way if you're hearing this message today. Are you loving yourself enough? Are you accepting yourself? Are you beating yourself up? Are you relying on outside sources to fill the void within you? Whether it's a, another partner or are you relying too heavily on your children to fill the void within your world? There comes a point where you need to Consider this if you're looking in your spiritual work to meet your highest potential. There's no getting around the appreciation and the self-assessment around are you loving yourself or are you beating yourself up? You can't get past that step if you are working on growing as a human and meeting your higher potential. It's just what it is. If you're carrying a lot of baggage from your past, uh, even immediate past, not necessarily distant past, if you're carrying a lot of baggage, a lot of wounds, a lot of pain from relationships gone wrong, you need to consider what did, what did you bring to the table in those relationships and what mistakes did you make? Not as a means to beat yourself up, but as a means to grow and develop, learn, release, and move forward so that you can attract a more healthy relationship in the future. Or you can create a more healthy relationship in the relationship you're in right now. Doesn't mean that the relationship you're in right now is going to end, but if it's not moving forward in a healthy way, what do you bring into the table that's helping to create discord or disharmony? And it doesn't mean it's all your fault. Like I said, this is a large message there's lots of complexities, but this is just a brief overview on the importance of self-love, the importance of unconditional love of self, of self-nurturing. And if that's not happening in your, in your world, then chances are there are gaps in your outside relationships that are, that are less fulfilling than they need to be. So this is Orosoma bottle number 81. Return Journey of the Empress in the Kabbalah. I'm Dr. Stacy Lamar. I am in Poughkeepsie, New York on March 3rd, 2021 at the Source NY Wellness Center. If you have any questions, if you have anything that you'd like to add to this conversation, please consider it. The email address here is the ny 8 at gmail.com. Our website is the source-ny.com. I'm sending you so much love and happiness on this early spring day. God bless till next time. Goodbye.